Okay, to select the proper size endotracheal tube for your pet, you really actually have to look inside the mouth. So everything up until this point is your best guess. Your PowerPoint will let you know more information, but what I did here was select multiple sizes of tubes, and I wanna show you how you can check. You need to be able to look at the size of the dog's nose. You need the nares and the distance between. So I'm going to pick out four tubes that are going to come close to what I think the size of the dog's endotracheal tube should be. And I'm going to look at this hole and compare it to the size of the dog's nares and decide which one I like best. So the one that looks the closest in size is this tube here. All right, to exaggerate that point, I have a larger tube and a smaller tube because what I had before were all very similar in size, but you can see how this one is going to be way too big, this one's going to be way too small. Okay, so the other way that you can tell, besides checking the size of the diameter of the nares, is the distance between the nares. So you can see that that one fits in between. All right, the other way is you're going to palpate the trachea. This one's a little harder to do, She's a nice size, not too fat, not too thin. You can feel very easily. But on larger animals, sometimes it's hard to actually palpate that. The other thing you need to do is check the length of your tube, which means you're going to have to check from the distance of the canine tooth down to the thoracic inlet. So you're gonna line it up this way and where your uh, lips come together, that's where you're gonna be putting your tie because when you tie the tube in, it's going to cinch behind the neck and it's going to pull it in. If you tie it up here, when you tie it tight, you're going to push the tube in too far. If you have it down too low and you tie it tight, it actually pulls it out. So make sure you figure out where you're going to put the tie and that comes to place where her lip actually comes together in that location there. So in my case, a five and a half size tube and you're going to have the tie right there where it says oral nasal. Okay, once you're done with figuring out which tube size you need, you're gonna have a half size above and a half size below. So I have my five and my six to go along with that. And that's because you never know until you actually get in there. After you've selected your proper size tube, you're gonna to wanna to inflate the cuff. And you have to attach it until your cuff is full. Don't over inflate, you can pop them. What you wanna make sure is that there is no leak. So usually I squeeze here and here at the same time and I kind of move my fingers a little bit because if I happen to put my finger over the hole, it's not going to deflate if there is one. So you must change locations. You also wanna to check to make sure that your cuff is perfectly round. If there's a bulge in one side, that's gonna put pressure inside the trachea and that's gonna cut off blood supply to that area and cause trauma. So once you determine that your tubes are all good, then you're going to deflate the cuffs. And you just hook it back up. Usually you have to give it a little bit of a twist and then you suck it out. While you're doing this, you're going to try to take a mental note about how much air did you put in there. So as I pulled out, I have, my syringe doesn't have markers on it at the moment, but it's about six cc's. Okay, when you prepare your tie, you can do one of several things. You can leave it like this once that's inside the pet's mouth, you tie it, cinch it down on the tube, and then tie it behind the dog's head. If you want to do a, a quick slide, we still put the tie in like this, line the two edges up, take the back portion of a 1cc syringe, slide it in, so then what happens is when you intubate your patient, you're gonna slide that over the tube, cinch it down on the tube, flip this over the dog's ears, and then you're going to cinch this down to secure it to the dog's head. Since there's no tube and I'm not actually doing it at this moment, but I wanted to show you how to do a quick slide release and cinching. Okay, so that's how you select a tube, how you check the tube, and how you prepare to tie the tube into the dog's mouth. Now I can have this already on top of the chart, and when it's this patient's turn, I'm already prepared.